we kind of postponed the show a little bit, but I'm I'm so thrilled that the show is happening now at this point in time when so much is happening in the world, but also personally in Jamal's world. Um, and we've you know had the honor and privilege of hosting Jamal as he's literally painting with his baby crawling on the floor. And um, it's just that kind of community space that I love. And I am, you know, really, really happy, Jamal, that you are bringing that ethos into our gallery setting as well. Um, so the show that we're going to be talking about today is called Freeze Tag Hustlers Gang. It's on view through Sunday, October 15th. If you haven't seen it yet, please definitely stop by. The gallery is open Wednesday through Sunday. And um, it's a, an incredible collage mixed media based show that um, we, you know, I've seen Jamal over the course of the last few months work on it in his studio. And in fact, there's still a work that he is making as the show is happening. So if you're interested in the process as well, um, you can come into the gallery and you'll be able to see the work um, in situ at the gallery. I'm going to briefly introduce um, Jamal and Rob, and then uh, we'll go through a few images of the show so that we can get an idea for those who haven't been. But the majority of this talk, I'm just going to hand it over to Rob to um, start having this conversation with Jamal. And I'm going to check out, I'm going to let the two of them take it over, and it will be not as image heavy. So. Um, pay attention to what you're going to see in the next couple minutes and then um hopefully you know you guys will come back and see it in person um so i'm going to read this and actually jana if you want to run the slides while i'm reading that's that's great too uh, jamal thorne is uh an artist originally from maryland he began his artistic journey at the age of 15 as a graffiti artist igniting a lifelong passion for creative expression Graduating from Morgan State University in Baltimore with a degree in fine arts, Jamal further cultivated his artistic identity by completing a master's in fine arts from the School of the Museum of Fine Arts and Northeastern University. Jamal is a recipient of the Joan Mitchell Grant for painting, and he is currently a professor of art and design at Northeastern University while maintaining an active studio practice in Boston. His body of work centers predominantly around his personal experiences as a Black man, delving into themes of identity performance, consumption habits, and the emotional labor inherent in everyday life. Rob Pro Black Gibbs is a visual artist, organizer, and community builder from Roxbury. He transforms Boston's cultural landscape, focusing on beautifying Black and Brown communities, as a co-founder of Artists for Humanity, he devoted over 30 years to teaching creative skills to youth and partnering with institutions to offer real-time opportunities for emerging artists. Rob has been recognized as one of Boston's most influential people and has received numerous awards, including the Boston Celtics Hero Among Us Award and the MLK Drum Major Award. He was the first local and Black artist to paint the coveted Dewey Square mural on the Rose Kennedy Greenway, which you can't miss and is amazing, and has been an artist in residence with Boston's Museum of Fine Arts and Mass Art. Rob's continuing practice is expansive and prolific. He envisions graffiti and hip hop as ways to educate young people and create images of beauty and resilience through murals and contemporary fine art. Um, we will have a Q&A chat session in the last 10 minutes of this talk. But in the meantime, if you want to put questions into the chat or just say anything, please feel free to do that. Um, it's also always nice to know who you are and where you're tuning in from. So if you want to put that in there as well, please feel free. Um, so I think we have just a couple more minutes, uh, sorry, a couple more slides with uh, which Jana, please feel free to slide through those and then, um, I'm gonna hand it over to Rob Pro Black Gibbs. Thanks everybody, and I'll see you later. All right, all right. How's everybody doing out there in the internet? Jamal, what's going on, brother? How you doing? Hey, you know, every day, every day. You know, we get to have, come on, man. <laughs> Honestly, I should be asking you how you're doing. <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing fine, man. You know, I'm live and direct over here at, uh, you know, the, the the new site and location for a project that I'm working on. But I find it ironic and like cool how 
you always catch me in the middle of doing something like real cool. So the past Sunday we just spoke and we had a healthy conversation about just kind of like where we've been at, where we're going and then what we, what the future looks like for us. And I feel like you were sent as a creative to just kind of like, you know, mirror ideas and conversation off of, because there's not a lot of time we get to step back from what we're working on and look at it and stand next to somebody that's going through the same process, you know? Work. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, like for those of y'all that don't know, Rob and I, uh, like we kind of know each other. Um, Rob has been there for me at really pivotal moments in my life. Like, like the first time I met Rob was at AFH, but it has like seeing him out and about, seeing uh, him at different shows uh, that, he, you know, friends of his that he supports more and more. It just has turned into me kind of just looking up to the to, to the dude. I mean, <laughs> honestly, so a lot of times I find myself um, asking for advice, uh, kind of like thinking about, you know, how to move out here as an artist in Boston. But I mean, Rob, I think we talked mostly just about about working in general. Um, and mm -hmm. I think I, like I'd asked you a couple of questions, man. Um, like, I think we kind of we, we started with. Uh, well, no, we started with your mural, your piece, and we started with that extra fly, super dope, like shirt that the model is wearing. And I think <laughs> the reason why <laughs> the reason why I really wanted to start there is because um, there's something about your work that whenever I see it, I just get it. You know, like every breathe life piece, uh, the piece in the green way. It's almost like, and I'm always glad that I know you and that I can come like ask you questions. But the funny thing about that is I don't always need to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and and you know what's wild is because I feel like um when I when I am creating, there is a I don't call it like a, a secret like language that we have, but like we're talking to each other without having to speak at all. And as long as I know you're out here doing things and um, I'm doing it within the same, we do stuff to let each other know that we see each other. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's, 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 it's beautiful, man. And when you're creating and just the layers that you're going into, I, I have an amazing time enjoying your work because it's literally peeling back visually what you created. And I can tell like the time that you put into whether I'm asking you what type of medium you worked with, and just kind of the stories that go along with it. I always want to know if I was thinking on the same wave and be like, yo, I wonder if, and sometimes I'm spot on. And then there's other times I'm like, yo, Jamal runs deep, man. <laughs> <laughs> this, <laughs> it's a beautiful thing though, because we're, we're finding a way to communicate with each other in different ways that I feel like a lot of brothers, you know, hear, the ins hear inspiration and in rap songs or see, inspiration and athletes and things of that nature and we're doing something that parallels and complements that while we're complementing each other you know yeah for sure um like uh uh gallery j can you do me a favor and bring up an image of um let's do exhibit b with the shoes come on <laughs> <laughs> okay oh my god uh oh yeah there we go yeah 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 so i think and this is the reason why i'm always asking you about that because in my work i i do think about us i think about what we do i think about what i do and i think about the meaning of the jordan i mean now i know now, rob you like sevens right I like, uh, yeah, I like sevens. That's what exactly. I thought. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got a whole piece dedicated to the number seven, so you already know. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm, like, all about the ones. You know, like, the Jordan ones, to me, uh, like, they kind of just become something different. Like, 
Like, who would have thought that at the time that he started playing, he was doing, like, you know, shoe deals, whatever, that he would be what he has come to be, like, for us. Mm-hmm. So, like, I look at a lot of the shoes, specifically the ones, like, just a symbol of, like, just potential, like, almost infinite potential. Like, it can only go up from here, you know. And sure enough, you know, there's, you know, gets up to the sevens. But I think the thing that I'm also kind of thinking about as I'm using images like this is, well, who designs the shoes? Like who makes them? And, you know, rest in power, Virgil. Uh, these came out of Virgil studio. So, but that that's what I mean when I say, you know, I'm looking at your work a lot of the time and I don't need words. I just see the images. You know, I saw like the images of you know my man blowing on the uh on the game cartridge like that like that's something that like I can identify with that we all most of us have played video games like we know you know you know I see you working with the Adidas and I see you working with the boom box right and, and the greenway piece so that's one of the things that I always really enjoy about your work it's one of the things that I kind of work to you know, add to my work as well. Mm -hmm. Like that level of like, just, there's like a, just a deeper layer of language and understanding with some images amongst us. And I do try to just deep, I try to dive a little bit deeper into that. And, you know, we talked about this on Sunday too, but that wasn't always the case for a long time. Like I felt like I was really using my work to work through like internal things with myself. And it's Mm -hmm. not till very recently that I started thinking about, well, what what else can come out of this? Who else can I talk to with these images? Who else can like extract a similar meaning that I extract from these images? And that's something that's very, very new to the work, honestly. It's beautiful, man. (laughs) <laughs> this is, <laughs> that's beautiful because what you're doing as well is that you, you're like you're cataloging or you're journaling just kind of your experiences and people are getting to see them delivering in a different way when I think folks think about cataloging or journaling they're probably thinking about photos or just like a journal you're actually writing in right but yeah. you're, you're busting down these layers of like very complex I, I think to call them like collages is just surface. You know what I mean? I feel like it's like um like a rhyme pattern in a song. You get what I'm saying? And the cadence of the colors in your piece happen to take anybody that is familiar with like any element of design or they just love color. Because I feel like with your pieces, you don't have to need, necessarily know how to read to know what's going on. And you feel something when you look into the depth of it, you know? You see something to the left, you see something to the right, and it's very balanced, but then it has this rough edge to just a lot of the pieces where you're like, yo, I'm breaking outside of the, you know, the the, the contemporary way of displaying things or just universal. You know, you're thinking outside of the box, but you're also like, this is the way my mind operates, this is the way my heart grows, and my artwork is a reflection of it. So to hear any story, to hear any narrative, to hear anything that's connected to your pieces, it damn near gives it steroids, you know what I mean? And like it beefs it up, you know, because like again, you're 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 putting up these portals, these windows that we're looking into, you know. So walk us through kind of like process. You get what I'm saying? Does a piece start out through a conversation? Is it something that you get inspired off of and you're collecting and gathering these thoughts? Like how, how, what's, what's, what's the, like the breakdown of, of a piece for, for Jamal? Yeah. Um, so, uh, Jay, can we pull up a uh, co-defendant number one? This is my joint actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, snap. Um, so, Essentially, uh, oh, that's my man. So I think a lot of the time I really go with something that I have a reaction to. It could be an image and it could also just be me just starting with color, just wanting to, you know, get like an emotion out. But 
I mean, I come from a drawing background. So a lot of the time it it usually does come in the form of an image. And for me, that's really important because like a while ago I was in school and um, I was reading the uh, the introduction to vitamin D, things by Emma Dexter. And she talks about the importance of drawing as a way to understand something. So me getting into the draw and Rob, you know, like you, you, how many sketchbooks you got? Huh? Like, come on, man. This many. <laughs> <laughs> Too many. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, drawing is, yeah, drawing is that thing that I think is primal in the sense that we try to understand something, whether it's an idea. And for me, when I start drawing these images, I'm trying to understand why I'm having a reaction to that image. I'm trying to understand like why that image has become important to me. And um, it usually builds from there. So I'll start out with the drawing uh, and then I'll have to let part of that drawing go. So like I'll mm -hmm. cover parts of it up. Like I'll let it get, you know, messed up. I mean, you know, like wheat pasting, you know, honestly, it's like, it's like back in the day, like when you're like slaying bricks and, always always like you might spend a lot of time on you know just one wall but of course like you know it's public space it's for all of us it's gonna get you know it, yeah it becomes community space immediately so to some degree i'm okay with losing part of that drawing and understanding that it's there i know it's there and that's good enough but mm. at a certain point I want to like get back to the drawing. I want to get back to what I think I might have lost. So I'll start digging into the layers and I'll start seeing pieces of the drawing and then that'll change what I draw next. So with my man here, um, the thing that I was really struggling with and kind of like trying to sort through was the passing of Chad, Chadwick Bozeman. And again, like that's like, he's one of us and he was a little bit, he was larger to me than like his physical form. I mean, mm. Rob, like you saw Black Panther, man, that was our king, yo. That was T'Challa, man. Yo, he was, <laughs> he was like that to us. And so with his passing and even with the way he decided to pass uh, with grace, keeping it low, keeping it quiet, I felt like I needed to draw him. Like I felt like I wanted to connect with with that. I wanted to get in touch with that. I wanted to reclaim him to some degree. And so gradually I started just adding things on. So thought about, well, what if, you know, uh, Chadwick Boseman, you know, had like cybernetic like parts to him and he could live forever. Mm. So he never left, he was just here, you know just doing characters doing his thing and being the person that quite frankly like we needed for so long then you know I got I came in the studio and you know I got a little a little edge in me that day so I said you know some let me throw a spear in here like let me give him like something to fight with because at the end of the day this thing that we do called living like a lot of times it really is a fight like you fight a lot of different things out here. Like sometimes like you fight yourself inter internally. And so I decided I wanted to give him like a tool for that. And it kind of just builds from there. So every time, you know, I draw something, I cover the whole thing up. I reclaim it by digging into it and I see parts of it. And then I'm like, all right, now he needs this. Then I'll do the same thing. Cover it up, build on top of it uncover it be like oh no 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 he needs this <laughs> and eventually yeah. what happens is they just become whoever they are like they become these characters that are complicated i'll say mm. that's l so you're, you're taking us through a cycle of building and destroying mm -hmm. that's a, it's an it's an infinite infinite pattern yeah um lovely that you immortalize the brother in, in just a way that like we have to continue to echo the presence and the stories of our people and their greatness. You know, it, it, it's, it's, there's enough drama on television and on the internet that like when you're coming out to, uh, to showcase some level of 
art appreciation. You know what I mean? We still got to help folks digest these large conversations that go on up here. Yeah. So to watch how you're breaking down just the moment that you captured and filled and was like, you know what? As he's transitioning to this to, to this afterlife, let me give my man some equipment so I can feel better about where he's gonna go. Facts. And and that's 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 big, man. That's big. Again, no frame to your thought. That's why the 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 free form that this is taking, man, it's gonna be something that can be forever growing. And yeah. that's what I love about your work, man. It just has this ability to like exist. You know what I mean? And when you zoom out from it, it almost has, it looks like a continent yeah. of sorts where like, you know, where all these thoughts are living, you know what I mean? And for every piece that you create, it's a different piece on the map. That is your life. So, yo, you, you, we doing the work, man. And, hey, and, and again, that's what we got to do. Yeah. When you speak, I'm listening, man. I'm listening hard. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, I think one of the other things that you said on Sunday that kind of struck me um, is the thought of the Breathe Life series being like uh, like a whole song and each one is a different verse. And you even talked about narrative in that conversation too, uh, talking about the story that you're telling. And I'll tell you, um, I think one of the good things about like building this body of work is I think this is maybe one of the first times that I've had to maybe gotten first time that I've gotten the chance to really think about each piece as like a different, you know, part to a story or as a different character in a story that I'm creating, that I'm writing. And that has also been really, really therapeutic, you know, mm. all right, follow me here. <laughs> nah. You know, thinking Not about sure. Uh, just the different everyday struggles that we have to endure just to stay functional, like just to stay a functional dad, stay a functional partner, stay a functional friend, to like walk around and feel comfortable in our own skin. Um, that's really, really hard to do. And if you look at the world like some like the way it's structured sometimes it feels like it's intentional and so when we're able to really rise fun like you know not just like function but man do the things that you do all the time in this city with those murals man you're not just functioning you you literally changing the face of the city hmm. and you given back in the form of inspiration to an entire community and to me that's really really beautiful so I thought about each one of the uh, figures and characters in this show as just a different person in this crew in this gang and that's them they the freeze tag hustlers man because <laughs> man you know the deal I mean every day is kind of like the game like in the job of us of our bars is to not get tagged not to get froze not to get stopped mm -hmm. and these brothers they have figured out a way to not get tagged whether it be in the form of like holding office like co-defendant one that we were just looking at he's a politician man mm -hmm. he's you know part of the part of the part of the gang but you know he he got elected to public office so he's looking at survival as a you know uh, the path to survival as changing the system from the inside and that's also part of the reason why i gave that dude all those tools mm -hmm. all the tools <laughs> <laughs> even the <laughs> armor you know what i mean exactly exactly but, but then i think also there's a lot of us that um and this is me too like i have a really bad shoe habit you know like i consume like i buy shoes it's like it's nobody's business these days. And a lot of the time, the reason why I do that is to help me feel comfortable walking around, to help me feel comfortable in my own skin. To help, It's almost like armor, you know? Mm -hmm. And a lot of the time, that armor is meant to kind of shield the vulnerability that's like underneath. Because honestly, vulnerability is one of those things that if you're not careful, somebody's going to exploit. 
So there's that character. Then there's like another character in the show, um, co-defendant number four, who's just a worker. Like, you know, he's kind of like, like my dad a little bit, you know, my dad, like he, he just worked and, and that was it. You know, he was, mm -hmm. and that was his form of love was to do the work, go to work, make the money and like, you know, make sure that there's something here for me, you know? And, um, and that's just like two examples of the maybe four to five characters that are in the show. But I envision these characters getting caught, basically mm -hmm. getting arrested for surviving. And I think that narrative, while certainly, you know, fantastical, something that I'm kind of making up, I think it is parallel to what we experience sometimes and what we watch happen to a lot of our brothers that are in higher places. And it's like, damn, like you could do all that. You could crack the code. And here come the IRS at Jay-Z ready to take X, Y, and Z amount of his money. It's like, damn, all right. It And that kind of thing just gets me. Furthermore, I mean, I just think it is a place, like this show has been a place for me to process all of that and to understand, try to understand like that dynamic that we experience every day. Mm -hmm. And I mean, just the title of your show alone, it invokes that thought, you know what I mean? And, and, and it's like, well, what is he talking about? Like, what are these pieces and who are these characters? But like, referring back to the metaphor that I made earlier about like how your pieces are just so free form and they look like continents, but these are continents to this world that you made, you know, and the realities that are in it can often be digested easier as a story when it's a reality for a lot of cats who come in and are able to look at it. How does it feel to probably be like mentioned as a as a translator of sorts? You know what I mean? Like how, do, how does that feel that you know that the stories that you're telling, you're speaking for a lot of people? Man, and... Fam, that's the reason why we got to talk more, because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's It feels like a lot of pressure. Um, sometimes I wonder if... Sometimes I wonder if I'm allowed to tell the stories. And I think a lot of that is just me being self-conscious, because I'm like that in general sometimes. But it feels like a lot of power as well. And, you know, I'm always thinking about Peter Parker to some degree, like with great power comes a lot of responsibility. So it can be a little bit stressful, uh, mainly because I put the stress on myself because the last thing that I want to do is misrepresent. So even though like a lot of these story stories are mine, there are also stories of friends. There are also stories of family. And I hold them in very, very high regard with reverence. And so it also feels really, really good to try to give those stories a different physical form. But it, it's a it's a complicated mix of emotions, as I'm sure you know, fam. Like it, it's tough. Cause you oh you, yeah, you do it too, huh? you know. <laughs> 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 I mean, you know, you're, you're preaching to the choir, but you're not. You know what I mean? It's like, um, it's a, it's, it's one big responsibility. Once you understand the gift, right? Like, damn, I had this gift, and half of the time people receive gifts well when they, when they, when they present it, when they wrapped in like very pretty, and you know, shiny things, but there's a truth behind a lot of what we talk about that's not really easy to digest or there are those vulnerable times where it's like, do I take the time to talk about this or do I invite the conversation? And bravo for you to take full advantage of the use of a gallery to invite those conversations so that it's in a safe space enough for people to just intake and be able to digest what's going on to come back as many times as the gallery is open to kind of revisit that conversation again. 
and hopefully they're getting to see it from different angles because you're far from simplistic with the with the delivery, you know. So for every time this place or your your, your body of work is in a different place, it's probably gonna everybody in the gang is gonna hold a different level, a different type of representation. Or maybe you're gonna look at them from a different angle, you know, instead of seeing it like from a blog view, you might be looking at it from a worldview, mm-hmm. you know. And yeah. things of that nature. So, you know, it's 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 a I see what you're doing, but <laughs> I'm gonna ask that you don't stop because there's so many levels to these stories, man. You know, and and, and it's just um the biggest question is how do you balance the ability to live, seeing that you you know you're tapping in the fatherhood now. You know what I mean? Yeah. And welcome to the squad, because that's when hey, the power hey. really come out. But um, how do you how do you maintain that balance between like you know, you're now entry in the fatherhood and just being creative, like with with what with like uh, what type of things that you found that were like interesting versus challenging? Um, that's a good question. For real, for real. Mm-hmm. The thing that I find challenging is from a practical standpoint the time the time that it takes to put like to to make the work and to be present um in a way that I need to be present in my home like and that's just one of the things that I'm still learning um luckily like my wife is like really supportive she's the type to say like hey like go like do do it do it i'll be here go do it and when you're done you come back and you be here you know mm. and, and just like little things like that really help me manage that that immediate like challenge of making the work um the other thing that i'm that i've learned uh and making this work because like the work is very much me processing a lot of things and yeah fatherhood is amongst those things trying to remember to my like just trying to remember that like I'm it's not my job to mold my son in a certain image like that's not my job at all my job in my opinion is to inspire him And we talked about this on Sunday, but inspire him by the way that I carry myself, through the things that I do through, honestly, the work that I make. And that's maybe the largest like internal revelations that that, that's come out. And maybe that's also kind of looking at fatherhood previously as me like teaching and molding him like actively, I think in doing this work, I've kind of learned that I'm just here to inspire him. That's what I'm here to do. And I'm here to talk to him about the things that he doesn't understand. Uh, I'm here to answer the questions that he has. And honestly, I'm also here to say, you know what, son? That's something that I don't know the answer to. Like, I, I honestly don't know that one. And a lot of times when I say I don't know, I think I'm also going to end up telling my son that, you know, you actually might be the one to figure that one out because mm. honestly, that that's what we're doing here. Right. Like, I mean, black, that's what we're doing. You're one of your quotes, the way you end your emails, it's a Nas quote. How does it go? Yo, like <laughs> <laughs> if the truth is told, the youth can grow. Right. And and that's and that's and that's and that's words to live by, man. It's a Nas is a prophet in so many ways with his lyrical content, but like it's it's a quote to live by. And yeah. that investment in our young people, let alone our children, is just that responsibility of being able to pass the information along and 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 you know, do the whole cycle of just teaching. Or to each one teach one. It's it's, yep. it's it's walking the talk, you know. 
And how do you know if anything that you gained works? You know what I mean? How do you know if it if the impact is is really doing what it's doing? And half of the time, I think when you have the intention, it 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 plays out different, man. You gotta be led when it comes to something like that. Yeah. The drive is just gonna come from the ability to survive and, and stay on point with it. But like you gotta be led with what type of information anybody that you that you're doing this in front of is absorbing and especially at home, you know. So like that 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 ability to be the first superhero your child and, and, and you know encounters it just something that comes in time when they're going to be able to talk like yo you know my old man did this my old man did that and it plays out on the type of wise individual they grow into because yeah. um i've yet to see a university give a degree in wisdom you get what i'm saying so <laughs> like on that note, we 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 got to do it the best ways possible, and if the ways that we're communicating is through our craft and this world of creativity, man, then so be it. That's where the that's where the jewel is not even hidden, but it's polished and and prepared, so that whoever touches it has a, a gains an understanding of it. This layered conversation between like um the creating. And then the ultimate creation of, of, of life, like you bringing your, your son into the world, like Masterpiece Theater right there, right? Word. <laughs> you know? Um, how yeah. do you feel like now with the work that you're doing, what level of preparation you feel like you're, you're, you're getting together to be able to like have your son and just anything that he's a part of, you know, be influenced by? Well, um, you know, I'm glad you asked me that question too. Uh, hey, Jay, can we uh bring up uh co-defendant number six with my man Nip? So, um, oh, we can go back. So, you know. Rob, we talked about like it, like it's again, it's symbols, people, figures that that kind of just transcend their physical. And the way that they transcend, in my opinion, is the wisdom, the jewels that they drop. And they drop them joints relentlessly, like with okay. reckless abandon. And I think Nipsey Hustle was one of those figures. And you could hear it in the way he was talking before he was rapping. Like there are all these old videos of Nip talking about setting goals and then moving towards those goals and then getting property and then re and then uh, rehabbing the properties and all like business ownership, all of these things, you know, while seeming like almost surface level, it was the way he spoke, the way he delivered those jewels through his art, through his work, mm -hmm. <laughs> that just really made them stick, made them stick for a lot of people. So with his untimely passing, <clears throat> excuse me, so with his untimely passing, <clears throat> it's like... It's some water, bro. <laughs> yeah. Hold up. <laughs> oh man, we gotta. We gotta I'm sorry, man. <laughs> there you go. See, this and I, this why you here for real. <laughs> <laughs> I got water yeah. a step away from me, and I'm not getting it. Um, but yeah, the way he delivered those jewels through his craft. Um. That's also something that I really admire because while we may have lost Nip, we certainly haven't lost the jewels that he was dropping because his music, his work, his art, his craft, his creative essence is still here. You can play his music right now and all the jewels are right there. They're oh, yeah. right there. And he mm -hmm. delivered them with such skill like with passion with just being you know unapologetically himself i think that's also something that 
um, I'm learning. And part of me learning that has come from um, doing this work. Uh, like if you look at his portrait, there was a real wild moment in my studio when I thought the whole piece was done. And I was like sitting looking at it. And I don't know, I was looking at the, the portrait of Nip and I was like, no, 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 we're not done yet. And I spent an extra three hours working on his portrait just because he inspired me. He inspires me that much, like that much. I was like, nah, man, nah, I want you to be here. Like, I want you to be part of this, this work that I'm creating because of your message, because of how inspirational you have been for me. And honestly, because of the quote that is on the wall in the gallery, like I chose that quote from Nipsey Hussle because I truly do believe that that's what I'm here for. I'm here to use my work to inspire people. And I think it's really important that that work and that inspiration starts in my home with my son. And yeah, like that, that's how we, that's how I'm gonna try to do it. Hey man, that's, that's an amazing answer. You're channeling brother. And 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 I and I will be on your heels to continue to, you know, make sure that you could that you that you're channeling, man, because like the world needs what's happening right now in, in, in different ways and different antidotes and the and you know, and to identify that like, yo, you know, our culture is a part of these lessons, that it's a part of this this information gain and, and there's a melting pot of ideas that just get delivered artistically, verbally, you know, any way. Let's, let's continue to uplift this culture and, and, and celebrate in ways that's going to inspire the next generation. You know what I mean? The, the, there's never the up and coming. It's the who's going to grab the baton and keep it going. And the words of Nip, it's a marathon, you know, mm -hmm. helping people understand the assets and the liabilities. Like everything he dropped, it was it's 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 beyond game it's just it's life you know yeah. what i'm saying and 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 i and i resonate with the brother too i, I felt like i knew him before i knew him you know yeah. and I, i'm happy that like you know and it's wild that like he's the focal point in your piece and he's all the way to the right mm -hmm. side you know what i mean holding all that weight with mm -hmm. everything else that's just you know building on the idea as if it's echoing from you know what I'm saying from from what he's told what he talked about and it embodies it all man I'm telling you your work it's abyss abyss deep we got to put a, a meter on it <laughs> word <laughs> we got to make we got to do this yeah well yo uh conversation again man Jeez. no we yo that's why we got to chop it up more often family because man I could talk about this stuff for hours and the conversation uh helps the work you know so i think maybe i think we might have to open it's yeah we right on we right on time i think we got to open it up to the questions now uh 746 so um uh ing do you want to call, call people how does that part work yeah yeah okay. I, I don't know I think, I mean, yeah, <laughs> we'll figure we'll figure it out. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Just keep oh, talking. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, four score and seven years ago. Now nah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, yo, yo are, are are you working on anything currently? Because like, let's 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 just take a minute and like step back and smell the bouquet you laid down in this gallery, bro. Like, like let's just take a minute. Like, is this something that you immediately working on? Because the work never stops or like you're really stepping back and you're like, you know what? You know, did your freeze tag game get you frozen or are you still moving and shaking? Man? Oh, no, we're still moving. No, nah, we still. Yeah. Moving. As a matter of fact, um, I think after the show went up, I think uh, this very wonderful person behind me uh, very explicitly said, OK, you got to take a break. And I was like, all right, all right, all right, I'll take a break. I'll take a break. But even in taking a break, uh, my mind is still going. Like my mind is like, all right, where like where does this crew go from here? Like what scenes go like 
emerge from this? Are they courtroom scenes? Are they street scenes? Like what? <clears throat> like what's next? And while a lot of the work isn't happening in studio at the moment, just because I quite literally need a break, but a lot of it is up here. And that's what those sketchbooks are so good for. It's like, I, like I write down different, I write down like wild stuff, like wild shit. Like, and in the moment it seems real unfeasible. But then when I get down into the studio and start, you know, just like, just tap tap, you know, they become real in a really, really different kind of way. So at the moment, nah, not really working too much on anything physically, but the plan is to get back to it uh, as soon as I'm allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, man. Uh, Jamal, can you talk? Oops. Can you talk about the poem? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can talk about the poems. Um, yeah, because, you know, um, you 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 lace my you lace my text message with one of uh, these one of these heaters. And I was like, yo. I'm not even going to try and read it in the cadence that I, I would think you talk about it in, but like, yeah. So uh, let's 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 jump into some of these poems, man. We can do that. <laughs> yeah, we 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 tapped on it a little bit on Sunday. All right, you know, y'all gotta be y'all gotta bear with me here, cause um, disclaimer: I didn't know that this was going to happen. I just looked at the work, and I was trying to figure out what they were saying like what each figure was saying, what each piece was saying, and from what perspective. So for the largest piece we just saw with Nipsey Hussle, um, the poem that I wrote is, ours is a distinct excellence. It's got a unique flavor, seasoned. It exists in spite of, in addition to, for the sake of nourishing itself. Generous to our kettle, the fire makes many shades of black. We don't burn easy. Endurance. We're the immortals. So a lot of those poems are connected to each piece and like what it was giving me. And that large piece was giving me like, this is what black excellence looks like to me. Like I'm thinking about LeBron James. Like you seen that brother play ball? It's crazy. He's oh yeah, 30, oh, yeah. He's thirty-seven years. What thirty-five years old? It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Yeah, he's uh, wild. yeah it's, it's wild. It's magical. Mm -hmm. Uh, thinking about Bill Russell. Bill Russell was a Celtic at a time when it was not necessarily fashionable and okay to be black in Boston. We, and, yeah, we yeah. Yeah, he managed to be excellent on and off the court. Like, exactly. and, and that's where that line in spite of comes. It's like, yo, I don't care. I don't care what y'all talking about over there. I'm excellent. Mm. I'm good at this. And I'm going to prove it. And not only am I going to prove it, I'm going to exceed expectations so that you can't say nothing about me. And if you being mad that I'm a person of color playing ball is all you got, then that's sad for you. Sorry. Exactly. Thinking about, uh, again, getting back to Nip. Nipsey, to me, is, again, one of those incredible examples of what Black excellence can be, even in the event of our passing. Mm. Like, his excellence goes beyond his physical form and lives on in his work. So... <sighs> And even, and this is the reason why there's a little bit of pain in that uh, poem is because even a young brother, Trayvon Martin, excellence, excellence, excellence. Mm -hmm. I mean, you hate to say it, but it's this really, really wild cautionary tale um, just to be careful, just to be careful out here, yo. And to me, that speaks to the need for us to live, the need for us to survive. And I think that is also an example of excellence. It's like unfortunate that we lost him. But again, like his message, his legacy is still growing. 
from his very, very unfortunate death. But that's the thing. We don't burn easy. No, nah, we, we don't burn we easy. Don't. We don't. We just don't. We don't. Mm -mm. But I think this is an excellent way to segue into um a question from Sarah Lee. She had, um Sarah had asked, or Sally Lee, I'm sorry, I'm over here. My my eyes is kind of watering, so Sally, I'm, 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 my apologies. But um Sally asked, have you ever been limited due to an injury or resources during your career? And how did you, like, create slash kept it going, if so? Part of the reason why... I work on a uh, paper is because it's cheap. Um, <laughs> and there've been times where I couldn't really get paper. So when I couldn't find paper, I would just find scraps of paper. And I just weave them joints together and be like, here we go. All right. That's the surface. Let's, let's go. All right. Give it to me. But to answer the question, um, I, I mean, and I'm not trying to like, sound a certain way when I say this, but nah, man, I can't, I can't let stuff get in the way of what, A, I need to get out of myself via the work, and I can't let stuff get, like, that get in the way of what I'm trying to say, like, to the rest of the world, to folks that see the work, to my own community, to to anybody that's able to walk up to my work and like extract something from it like i i think i need to be able to function in spite of an injury now don't get me wrong there will come a day where i need a wrist brace uh wrist support because of the way and the length of time that i draw but not yet and there will also come a day where i need to hide well nope that day has already come now that i think about it matter of fact sally was a very, very dedicated hand when it came to one of my projects previously at Tufts. And that's a project that uh, I needed help on because again, that's a limitation of mine. Sally knows the size of that wall. She was there. Um, <laughs> the wall is like two stories high. And we was drawing it on that joint with like a fine tip pen. So even which is uh, insane by the way like <laughs> like God. you don't know how many people approach me about that particular piece like yo you remember jamal jamal from, i'm like jamal my man <laughs> jt no thanks and they were like yo he did a piece in like sharpie or pen or something <laughs> like that and i was like yeah i was like i was like that's how my man gets down hey, now, in the back of my brain <laughs> i'm screaming but I had to be cool because I was like, yo, that's how my man moves. Yo. He's, he's, he's a, you know, he's he's out here killing it. And it's amazing that, like, it comes up in conversation because people, people know that we know each other. Yeah. But they're like, they're like, yo, they don't, they're talking about it like, hey, like you laid, you laid it down, brother. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> I, got, I got good inspiration, but that's one of those examples of like a limitation that it's just not allowed to get in the way of what we got to do. So if it's a limitation, I'm always looking for a way to address it, to get through it, to make it work to my advantage. I mean, dog, like you paint outdoor murals, you know the deal, like you, you know what it is. Can't let the weather like stop the mural. Like you gotta do that joint. <laughs> yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta respect the work, man. But it's a real, it's a real recognized, real situation, man. And. I, I appreciate you even having me a part of the conversation because we're just mirrors reflecting each other's life. Wonderful. You know what I'm saying? And that's real. I appreciate that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, man. Rob, uh, Ng wants to know uh, how long the Greenway John took you. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> the well, Greenway. It was 32 years up until the day that I paid. So, um, so, it took 52 days, 52 days to do the Greenway mural. Um, and I didn't do it alone. I was with my squad, the GM crew. You know, you got go five, take one, and so on. And the four of us, like, imagine I had the ability to multiply myself three times. That's how that got done, you know? And it was an investment, you know? It was an investment of time. And what we put in definitely has its results and the patience of like, you know, the homie Audrey at the Greenway, 
was 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 matched. You know, um, we didn't know what was going to come out of it. It was only going to be up eighteen months, but it was an investment, and so it got renewed to go up another eighteen. You know, and and now we're living in that time, and and what a beautiful sentiment to the city that uh we came up on the fifty years of celebrating hip hop. In Boston is present. You get what I'm saying? Like right on time. We wasn't behind or trying to catch up or anything. So it was a it was a blessing and an honor to like really highlight through. Mm -hmm. And if it took fifty two days the last two years, it was all worth it, though. Uh, <laughs> hey, <laughs> oh, it was all worth it. <laughs> oh, man, yeah, yeah, facts, uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Well, man. um. 759, uh, yo, Rob, Black, I just want to thank you for making the time to do this with me. Um, it really does mean a lot that you're sitting here, we're having this conversation in front of these folks. And uh, yeah, yo, I just appreciate you, family. You got it, man. You know, I'm here live at the site where I'm doing the mural. I had to, I had to ask for a, a cut to go into because this conversation is that important. And apologies, you know, on, on last week turning into this week, but like this was this was everything happens in in, in divine time, man. And you helped me take a step back and enjoy what's going on right now. Let's keep doing the work, brother. You will, you know it. All right, family. All right then. Peace. Peace, peace. Thank y'all for coming. <laughs> All right, y'all.